do a presentation. Uh, I hope I will not uh, massacre their names. We have on the one hand, Tiana Pukovac, and on the other hand, Lana Laurentik. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Uh, Tiana uh, has an affiliation with the Institute of Philosophy in Ljubljana, and she also coordinates uh, the cultural center MAMA and Cooperativa, which is a regional platform for culture. And she, she, she's doing research on history of socialism, but also on theoretical uh, psychoanalysis. Uh, she also worked, uh, she has a, a very interesting research on uh, monuments in transition that was focused only in Croatia. And the second speaker, Lana Lurencic, Lurencic, uh, oh, is Lurencic. Laurentius, thank you very much. She's from the Institute of Art History in Zagreb. She's a PhD uh, candidate and her focus is on history and theory of uh, photography. And today they will talk to us about uh, a topic and you have the title on the slide, so I will uh, take too much time. So you have all, uh, just such as Alana, you have the floor for 15 minutes uh, and we are very uh, interested in to hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction and for having us and to all of the speakers who are here today. Um, so I'll just dive right into it. Uh, present absence or absent present. Monuments to Yugoslav partisan struggle between future present and present perfect. When thinking about the breakup of Yugoslavia and the bloody wars that followed the destruction, that followed the destruction of monuments to people's liberation struggle and the socialist revolution, point to the political and ideological struggles which brought about the breakup. To understand what happened and how it happened, firstly, it's important to know that from 1945 to 1990, as you can see in this picture. Can you speak a little bit louder, possible? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, as you can see in the picture, between five and 8,000 monuments and memorials have been erected only in Croatia and approximately 16,000 in all of Yugoslavia. According to the monograph, uh, The Destruction of Anti-Fascist Monuments in Croatia, published by the Anti-Fascist uh, Association in, in 2001, almost 3,000 of these monuments were devastated in some manner between 1990 and 2000, 731 of them being sculptures. So we conducted a research that resulted in an exhibition in 2012, which pointed out the patterns that made destruction at this scale possible. During our research, we developed a sort of typography of destruction where four methods were identified and the destruction was classified to better grasp the complexity of the underlying processes. The first method were, monu uh, were monuments devastated or destroyed as a result of war activities. The second monuments devastated or destroyed as a result of terrorist actions. Third monuments that suffered physical or symbolical alterations or which were removed by orders of the local authorities. And fourth, unmaintained and unprotected monuments that were left to decay and frequently used as scrap material. The first two categories were in a way expected. We noticed that at the time it was common when speaking about devastation and destruction of monuments to refer to them as a result of war activities and terrorist activities that followed. This was not only the discourse of the media, but it was also adopted, albeit in a different register, by the Anti-Fascist Association in their monograph. But serious investigations or charges for the destruction of cultural heritage were never made, and the destroyed monuments were not or, were not, or very rarely included in lists and publications about the heritage destruction during the war. This was both in discrepancy with the Croatian constitution of the 1990s that states, although, although in a revisionist manner, that the roots of the democratic state of Croatia are in the anti-fascist struggle of World War II and the socialist predecessor state, as well as with the legislation dealing with the protection of monuments. The destruction continued long after the war finished in 95, and the modes of destruction, its long span, it is still happening to this day, are bringing to light structural and complex causes which cannot be surmised either as war collaterals or as simple cases of the Mnatia Memoria. For these reasons, the questions we want to raise are what were the newly created nation states hoping to forget by this destruction, but more importantly, what is the structural function of this forgetting in the process of nation building, as well as its function within the general discourses of totalitarianism and anti-communism. 
uh, struggle of partisan fighters from all Yugoslav people combined with early changes in the political and economic doctrine formed a unique historical experience. Build monuments were not significators of mere narrative nor abstract expressions of historical events or people, but frequently complex conveyors of messages that were both embodying local past, the idea of brotherhood and unity, ideals of socialist states and prospects for the future that will come. Uh, designed in different manners, they were frequently envisioned as more than just monuments. They were central points of memorial squares in villages and towns, formed as public parks and memorial forests, memorial rooms in culture houses, taking not only the commemorative functions, but also taking on public functions that were missing in the communities. In short, already in the 60s, monuments were not only carriers of the memory of the, on the anti-fascist struggle, but also carriers of the process of modernization and urbanization of Yugoslav society. But this was not without problems. The inventorization of monuments was never done, and their maintenance was a constant source of problems. Nominally, they were all regarded as heritage of historical importance, but in fact, the, protections by the protection by the Republic bodies was implemented in the case of individual monuments that underwent the process of registration and placement in the Republic registers of cultural or monuments of nature. In late 70s, the process of inventorization, reclassification, and their revalorization began, but it was never finished. And in the 90s, the legislation changed. The monuments that were once social ownership became state property, but factually, no one's. The territorial configuration was changed and municipalities got new legal forms. Parallelly, a large number of monuments never underwent the process of registration. This was especially problematic in cases of monuments that were part of memorial areas, as the category itself was simply erased from the new nature protection law. An extreme and symptomatic example is definitely the Petrovac monument you see here on Petrova Gora, that was most important republic monument in socialist Croatia. The monument was built in 1981 and plated with expensive inox plates and was mostly undamaged until 2000. Then theft of its plates began, followed by demolition of the finished parts of the interior. Parallelly, the memorial area of 17,800 hectares was divided between four municipalities that were not able to come to an agreement of how to take care of this large area. The old network of organizations and legal bodies taking care of the monuments and memorial areas were gone, and the new ones were never truly built, as the state failed to appoint jurisdiction. This opened the doors to the full-blown devastation in urban areas, with which, uh, which were not in the war zones, and enabled local governments to dispose memorials in cities throughout Croatia. The most notorious examples from, example from the 80s is the city of Osijek, in which the government removed and destroyed all of the 82 memorials in the city, and the politician in charge was later trialed as a war for the war crimes. The destruction in urban centers was more than act of erasure of histories. It was stepping into the urban fiber with different results in different places. Here you can see that this square built around the monument was left now without its monument. It, it's still looking like this today. In others, new monuments were put in their places, not so much to obey the urbanistic measure, but more to take the symbolic position like in this case from Gospich here. This one was actually made by a, a good sculpture. The scale of destruction and removals was such that the right-wing government that got elected in 2003 started new inventorization and revalorization. By stripping them of their historical importance, the idea was to emphasize only the presence of artistic value, while the historical one should be re-examined. This delicate process is not finished to this day, but in the meantime, a lot of the so-called ugly monuments were removed from public places. Others did get confirmation of their artistic value and local museums were given instructions to take care of them. For this monument, this was too late. It was mined in 2091, and then what was left was its pedestal with a stole. And the sculpture was in fact designated to, under, uh, to go under vision through 
preventive protection, but this didn't stop the local government to remove the remains in 2010. And this was decided, decided after the founding of the business zone in this area. The removal was conducted without any consultation with the regional office for monument protection and without <clears throat> deciding on the alternative location of the removed remains of the monument. In the meantime, the business zone went bankrupt. In 2009, the monument has resurfaced and as it was hidden all these years by the locals. Legal protection and recognition as heritage has not proved to be helpful in many cases. Examples from CISAC are also showing this. This monument that was placed in the center of the city and is made by a really important uh, Croatian sculpture was removed in the 90s to the remote forest of Brezovica so it would be protected from the vandals. After the removal, it was systematically devastating with its parts disappearing year by year without any actions conducted to prevent this. In early 2014, what remained of the monument was stolen. In the May, the monument and the prosecutors were found. The monument was cut to smaller parts and prepared to be sold as scrap. Also in Sisak, there is this other monument uh, located on the uh, city cemetery that was simply left to decay. Over the years, it became statistically unstable and dangerous. So it was fenced around and marked with no access signs. This example is particularly interesting because only a few meters from it, a new monument was erected in 2095 okay. to, commemorate, to commemorate the victims of the war of the 90s. The cross-shaped monument is regularly maintained and in good condition. Besides this discrepancy in maintenance, what is interesting is this direct competing for physical, but also the symbolic space. We can see this also in the two Zagreb examples. On the city cemetery, this is the monument dedicated to the national heroes. This one was built in the early 2000s. And also in this square in Zagreb, where you can see that this is actually the earlier monument that was situated here. And then in the late uh, 90s, this one was put in their place and this other one was like pushed to the back. But there are also examples of monuments that were enlarged by addition of parts commemorating the wars of the 90s, trying to symbolically reconcile or to give equal importance to both historical events and seeing them as a continuation or protection of homeland and identity. Here we have a square on the island of Kirk where we have an earlier uh, World II, uh, Second World War memorial and then in the uh, 90s, this new one here was added and now they have joint commemoration uh, uh, activities here. <clears throat> the scales of intervention, of course, depend on financial possibilities and imagination. In some places, the monuments were simply made more creation by adding color or changing some symbols, red star with cross or coat of arms and changing of specific words and sentences on plaques. This is maybe the most frequent way the monuments are destroyed today. They were left to decay for years to become invisible in overgrown bushes and grass and then altered under the pretense of restoration. All of the above examples point out to the fact that forgetting of uh, people's liberation struggle monuments was systematic and intentional. Uh, we know from psychoanalysis that forgetting is not a passive thing. It's active and takes effort, even if the process is not conscious. In case of social forgetting, what is at stake are the structures and social relations which sustain certain things in our consciousness, or to put it in more aesthetic terms, which make things visible for us. In her recent book, uh, the renowned Croatian author Tuvrka Ugrašić tells us of the story of her visit to the hot springs in Toposko, a town located below Petrova Gora. Toposko and Petrova Gora were historically the epicenter of anti-fascist resistance in World War II, and the Third Convention of Zavnoh, the state anti-fascist council for the national liberation of Croatia, took place there. Ugrišić tells us of a dialogue with a man from the tourist office in Toposko. Upon asking him if there are any tourist sites that she can visit, he responds, there is nothing. This perplexes her, as she remembers going on trips to Petrova Gora. So she asks about the partisan hospital at Petrovagora to hear the response, there is nothing there now. 
still determined, she asks about the Bakic monument. The answer is the same. There is nothing there. In the end, she says, but there was a convention of Zavnoh in Toposko. Surely there must be a building to be seen. The answer is still, there is nothing there. The building collapsed. After asking how this is possible and where the building was, the, main, the man responds that the building was in front of the Hot Springs Hotel and that there is a plaque explaining everything. So here you can see the building and then the uh, blank space with the, with the plaque. Of course, the story of these locations is much more eventful than the tourist clerk was willing to say. The partisan hospital, although ransacked and left to decay, is still standing. The Bakic monument, now a ghostly vision, is also standing against all odds and the story of its destruction is well known. The building of the Convention of Zavnov, which contained the wartime mural by Zlatko Pritsa, which you can see in the uh, upper right cor corner, was mined on September 14, 1991, while Croatian troops were withdrawing from Toposko. So there is something in these places, if not- Two, physical, two minutes, if I may, okay. two minutes. If not a physical something, then certainly historical facts to be conveyed. Still, the dominant narrative, what we as Croatians are at ease with saying, what is the Heimlich of contemporary Croatian society is precisely this nothing. The act, as Ugrašić so wonderfully points out, by which these places become non-places, the blatant forgetting, not only of a revolutionary and socialist past, but also of the violence upon which the contemporary state of Croatia was founded. These monuments have become precisely the places of struggle for the legacy of socialism and anti-fascism, functioning at once as present absence of progressive politics and absent presence of its memory. The symbolic homogeneity that is appointed to the monuments today as expressions of unity and brotherhood, of state dogmatism, of totalitarian oppression can only function if these monuments are seen as the other, the dark opposite, the enemy of the creation national project. Of course, once this is established, they can be revised and reappropriated as part of national heritage. It is only in relation and as distorted reflection with the equally imagined homogeneity and unity of the Croatian nation that these monuments can be seen as monoliths. Far from it, the monuments, as all things historical, are as heterogeneous and changing as it gets. Their reception, use, as well as aesthetic valorization depends on the ever-changing social relations in Yugoslavia as well as Croatia. Once they were places of contradictions and they still are at once expressions of state dogmatism, both in Yugoslavia and Croatia, places of communal mourning, tourist sites, developmental projects, etc. And it is precisely these things, this contradiction, this life of Yugoslavia, the social fiber of the socialist project that needs to be forgotten in order for the new regime to justify its violent establishment. We need to examine the processes of violent destruction of the Yugoslav social legacy, workers' rights and organization of work, public health and public education systems, public space and civil institutions, industry and economy, the processes of transformation and privatization of social ownership was taking place in the shadow of an ideological struggle against the backward totalitarian Serbo-communist project of social Yugoslavia. These were all the names that were given um, to, to Yugoslavia in the 90s by the new regime. The new regime turned towards historicism and construction of national mythology. The regime that fetishizes purity of nation, of language, of culture had to create a cut with social relations constructed in socialism and with symbolic representatives of these relations. Thus, it's no wonder that the People's Liberation Struggle monuments were among the first to be targeted. So ironically, we could say that Croatian national ideology has succeeded at the exact place where the dogmatism of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia failed. In its effort to erase all traces of Yugoslavia, it has established it as a specter ever haunting our present. The nothingness that surrounds us becoming ever more visible and pointing out precisely to that which is lacking. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Lana, and thank you very much, uh, Tiana. Um, I have uh, not exactly a question, but it's more a remark, and then I have uh, a question. Uh, Roland Bowman pointed out, of course, uh, monuments were destroyed, not only in the cities, but also in the cemeteries. 
um, the targeted Yugoslavia as a state, the, the communist legacy, but there was also vandalism against uh, the Jewish community. So how can you consider this? And I had a question because you, you mentioned forgetting and I was wondering if forgetting has the same meaning in Croatia, the, the main focus of your topic, and compared to Serbia, for example, because I, I went to Belgrade and I saw monuments on Tito that are still in the public space. So just those questions. Would you like to Jewish or me? I'd... Okay. Uh, well, uh, first in regards to destruction in the destruction of Jewish monuments. Uh, well, uh, of course, um, the, I mean, it's no uh, secret that the the, domi the Croatian regime and uh, uh, the dominant ideology that it was built upon um, and they are not hiding this, uh, is drawing their inspiration uh, from the Ustasha regime, so the, from the fascist regime of World War II. And uh, in, in this way, uh, I think I would interpret it in this way, uh, so it's, it's not uncommon. It is a regime that is extremely nationalist, racist, misogynist, clero-fascist. We are, uh, uh, you know, the Jewish community is not the only minority community which is being constantly attacked. Uh, this is also the Serbian community, the Roma community. These are um, constant uh, uh, topics of, uh, of uh, uh, dispute, I would say, within not just the political sphere, but also the, 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 the Croatian society at large. Um, and uh, of course, it is kind of maintained within this um, more uh, general narrative of, of anti-totalitarianism, where uh, you can have this type of uh, 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 blatant anti-Semitism, which tries to sell itself um, as some sort of a progressive democratic politics. Uh, and then uh, 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 in answer to the second question, yes, the uh, I think we can see different processes taking place in different uh, uh, succeeding states. For instance, in Slovenia, the monuments are in great shape and they are being uh, uh, um, uh, they're, they're, they're being visited regularly. Uh, none of them have, uh, very rarely they are being vandalized. But what is important to know is that there, will, there was a type of revision which happened in the 1990s um, uh, where with the idea of the national unity of the Slovenian nation. Of course, the national unity of the Slovenian nation also meant uh, revising this history within uh, the tradition of, of nation state building, um, which also was the, the, the history of erasing thousands of people uh, of uh, other Yugoslav nations from the citizenship of Slovenia. Yes. And then in the, in the, I'm sorry, just, but in the case of Serbia, um, this, um, um, this is also a problematic thing, the fact that the monuments were not being attacked until uh, mid or, or early 2000s because of uh, Milosevic's pretenses to, to be the, the one who was uh, um, the protector of the Yugoslav uh, heritage. And as we know, he was anything but a protector of the Yugoslav heritage. So I think we, we have to understand the fact that these monuments are still uh, um, there in Serbia within within this complex situation of uh, Serbian politics from the 90s and how it changed from the 90s to today. Uh, I would just like to add what is also really important and it's actually going on now from 2010, especially in Slovenia and in some parts of Serbia is this nation nationalization, uh, but also adding these uh, points like the homeland uh, army from the fascist side in Slovenia, their monuments besides these monuments and also opening the debate of, that is going like all of the victims are the same, all of the victims are equal. And in Serbia where you have this appropriation of monuments where all of the people are changed with Serbian people and uh, erecting of little churches and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but maybe the most interesting is actually Bosnia with with each uh, with uh, each uh, two uh, entities there. And in Bosnia is this monument of Sutjeska that was actually the only um, 
state monument in uh, Yugoslavia, which today has two commemorations. One commemoration that is by the Bosnian entity and the other that is by the Serbian entity. And uh, they are not commemor commemorating on the same day because they started to count victims and say, which monument is it? Is it more Serbian victims there, Bosnian, Croatian, who died there? Nobody died there. It is erased from the official politics of both entities. So you have uh, really, really interesting amalgaman of different and in a way similar strategies that are happening in different times, but on the whole of uh, ex-Yugoslav territory. Yeah, and if I can just add to this, we have a similar situation to that here in Croatia at the biggest um, uh, concentration camp site in Croatia, the Jasenovac Memorial, which has a, a memorial museum as well. We have two commemorations happening. One is with the state delegation and the other is with the minority representatives, which some, some of which or most of which are uh, now part of the government, but still not uh, uh, coming to, to commemorate um, on, the same, on the same day because there are disputes and there is very strong nationalist revisionism over what actually happened in Yasenovac. And there we now have uh, uh, even voices, um, right-wing revisionist voices that are uh, uh, completely um, erasing or, or negating that this was actually an, a concentration camp. Um, uh, which are becoming more and more um, aggressive and more and, and getting more and more public and media space. And I think that one of the things that structurally um, sustains all of these, uh, especially the possibility of rehabilitation of fascist, of different fascist organizations or, or, or um, different uh, fascist, fascist groups um, uh, from, from this area is uh, the horrible resolution of the European Union about the Day of Remembrance, which equates all anti-totalitarian um, all anti-totalitarian regimes, right, or all totalitarian regimes, right, in this anti-communist matter. So where, you know, Nazism and fascism become equated with socialism and with socialist regimes. And this, of course, enables these right-wingers to then say every victim is a victim. So, you know, we, we have to uh, now, for instance, in Montenegro, they have built a huge new cemetery for for the, um, the 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 soldiers of Wehrmacht uh, or you know we have uh, uh, monuments being erected all over uh, former Yugoslavia uh, to Chetnik regime to Ustaše to Belogradeci etc etc and you have those reconciliation projects yeah. where you can on the same uh, website site uh, find monuments of the fascist uh, and the monuments dedicated to their victims being treated as monuments of totalitarian regime, which is absolutely, I mean, disgusting. Okay, thank you very much. And <laughs> I think this opens a lot of perspective for uh, discussion because the, the topics and the chair monuments is also something very interesting we didn't mention until now. 